live at Nationals Park here in Washington, D.C. We've got an NL East What's up, guys? Rich Gamer 997 here. Today, we are back on MLB The Show 21. If you guys enjoyed this video, it'd be really appreciated if you drop a like, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you never miss another upload. Let's play MLB The Show 21. Tim Kate gets the ball for Washington in this one. Dan Blizak, what's the Having word a on brain him? fart. Hey, one of the strengths <laughs> of this guy is handling right-handed hitters. Right-handers coming into this game are hitting under 250 against this guy, so he's doing a lot of things right when the right-handers step into the batter's box. Digging in, the switch hitter, Richard O'Neill. His performance at the plates gives him Change the bat. <laughs> boost and put him in strong contention for the batting title. And he's got a chance to collect some serious hardware, individually and team-wise. If everything goes according to plan and he finishes strong, this team's going to play. That's no doubt. It's a no-doubter. And that is going to clear the wall. A home run. It's a two-run shot to straight away left. 46 now for him on the season as the Phillies have taken a two to nothing lead. <sighs> Tied up now with Johan. Johan Soto. What a way to get things started while playing on the road. Top of the first and a big fly just like that. They take the lead. This guy's got some pretty good bat control. Oh. Timing just to take off there as this one's fouled off to the right. Runners at the corners, two men out. Line toward right center. And this is going to line up as extra bases as that'll play one for sure and maybe a second. And that'll bring home run number three. It's now a three nothing cushion. So now time will be called as we're going to get a visit from the pitching coach here as he'll hope to settle his guy down. Next to hit, Jamer Candelario flew out and is only at bat so far. Oh and two, here it is. And he got him, minimizing the damage at just. Ball four, take the base. He's out. Out. Three. Three. That's ball four. Three. Out. Josh Bell, the next to hit. The first baseman, number 19. Josh Bell. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Long run for the center fielder. He gets there, and that's the second out. Now to the plate, here is Richard O'Neill. He doubled his last time up. Adi jumps on this one. It's high and deep to center. And, oh, he missed a home run by a there matter of Come feet. On, He's off the You're wall. Up. You're up. And he is in the yeah, third yeah, with a triple. There. His third hit of the night. And case in point why he's one of the best bats in the business as he's aboard for the third time today. He has had so many multi-hit games this year. Why are we surprised he mixed in another three-hit performance? I expect this guy to finish strong and fight for the batting title up until his last at-bat. 
Next batter is Jamer Candelario. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. O'Neill at third with nobody out. Candelario. And he gets under this one as the ball is skyed into very shallow right. Oh, yeah, that ball didn't go nowhere. They got throwing out. I tried to run home. Yeah, I might have made it. Who knows? We got speed to burn. And he can't allow the same thing to happen in this situation. This is this is hit high and deep out to left. Ball that's carrying on the warning track. He makes the catch. And another runs across as this is now a four nothing ball game. Great job there by this power hitter, known for driving the ball out of the ballpark. <laughs> Carter Keeboom digs in now. He's now working on a one for two eight. game so far. Carter. Here comes the one two. High in the air out to center field. O'Neill is there. Two gone. So the shutout still intact. He's out. So the next to bat will be Richard O'Neill, three for three on the day, and turning in yet another big performance in the midst of a race for the batting crown. There's a swing and a missile sent out to center field. And this one is gone, a home run. 409 feet, 106 mile an hour exit velocity. Shot to straight away center, his second home run of the game. As they pile on, it's now six to nothing. Second home run of the game right there. He is locked in at the plate. You hear so many of today's players talk about rhythm and timing. Mm. I thought it was gonna catch that one. <laughs> it didn't look like it was gonna leave the yard. Jumped out to an early lead in the first and never looked back. Jimmy Nelson pitches his way to a team leading 12th win of the year. So that will wrap things up for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Wachney, and our whole crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, head to the show.com. victorious Philadelphia Phillies. Six runs, eight hits, no errors. They left five men on base. For the Nationals, one run. Seven hits, no errors. They left nine runners on base. Time of the ball game, three hours and seven minutes. Tonight's paid attendance at Nationals Park, 41,339. The Nationals thank you for your attendance and remind you to please drive home. Just a couple of miles from the Capitol building at beautiful Nationals Park in our nation's capital. Tonight, it's an NL Eastern Division showdown between the Philadelphia Phillies and the Washington Nationals. Richard O'Neill, the league's leading hitter, continues his march toward the National League batting crown. Next. 
Seth Romero will be on the bump for game two of the series. Dan Plezak Romero. Hey, you take a look at that ERA, and it's a little bloated right now. This guy's a better pitcher than that, but he hasn't been real consistent. It's a lot bloated. <laughs> So now here is Bryant Packard. It leads things off here in the bottom half Leading of the first. For the Nationals, the right fielder, Bryant Packard. Now here's the pitch. Ball that These hit. Phillies, as they enter play here tonight, fellas, got to be considered one of, if not the hottest team in baseball right now. Winners of eight of their last ten ball games. Yeah, Maddie, this team finds itself with a huge lead, double digits right now, and climbing, playing really good baseball. Some people will say, oh, you don't want to have that big a lead. You start resting on your laurels. I, I, I look at it the other way, man. You've earned the right to kind of get some guys off their feet if the manager wants it. There's a lot of different ways you can go about it. This team's focused and playing really good baseball. I would not worry about it. Keep pushing the throw. Mm. And the throw is not going to be in time as he's able to reach base safely. First offering on its way. Hit in the air down the right field line. And that will end up a foul ball. 0 oh 1. Here it comes. Nope, that's oh, come on, Blue. That's right in the corner. Can't paint that shit any better. Trying to elevate that heater. He wanted that pitch right there. But I can tell you as an offensive player, I'd rather give you six inches off east-west than to have you call that high fastball. Fastball called strike three. And there's the first out of the inning. That's a pretty unique pitch sequence, guys. Usually pitching is all about mixing pitches and location. But he threw that all out the window to get that strike out. He offered the same pitch three times in a row, so I guess he sort of used that reverse. Yeah, it's Juan Soto. <laughs> he had 46 home runs, and I have 47, so. First in National League in OPS. On base percentage, really? And jam the shit out of him. <laughs> and we know he got jammed. He hit that ball pretty far. Right on that pitch that time as he wraps it into center field, the base hit. Cut hole, cut hole. Yeah, that's crazy. That was a good pitch and he hit it. So that'll bring up Josh Bell as he will look at a first pitch fastball for the Lord. He enters play with 14 home runs to his credit this year. Into the corner and slicing foul. Packard over at second. De Young at first, two out in the inning. Fouled off again, and now he's in a one and two hole. Frozen on strike three for the final out of the inning. Later, Bell. on their toes that opens up the off-speed pitches later in the game and it's quickly Owen to <laughs> pull that one and no strike three called as he gets a little help there one away well that call looked like it was a little in the pitcher it wasn't outrageous hey listen Calling balls and strikes is a really tough job, and even the best are going to miss some from time to time. Especially when <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, like that last one. Not sure the hitter would want to hear that, though. Not in seven. 
Good catch up. Plate now. Mitch Garver. Hey, He'll take a look at a high strike that time. It's nothing in one. 276, the average coming in for him. 13 home runs and 44 RBIs. And there are our umpires calling balls and strikes in this one, Mr. James Kingsley. Dan, I know I was an offensive player, but I'm okay being a pitcher's umpire. If you're going to consistently Got Garver chasing. that outer half, James Kingsley's usually going to give it to you. Hey, listen, there's a reason why the pitchers throughout the league, they call him the king of the hill. You move the ball a little bit off the strike. That's so he's slave. That arm up. He's a Pitch break, pitch nine player. inch. Spin rate, 25, 75. Revolutions per minute. Next to bat, Orlando Garcia. Orlando. As he takes a cold strike on the black, it's 0-1. Man, that's seven straight strikes to start this inning. He's got a chance at an immaculate inning. And he falls behind 0-2. Nothing in two count and the pitch. You can definitely tell with that foul off right there that he's picking up spin on this pitcher's off-speed stuff. Maybe expect a fastball on this next one. Fouled off. He got a mistake right there, but missed it. Can't foul that pitch off in a big spot. 0-2 count. Heater caught too much of the zone. Mm. One ball. Tries the slider to ring him up. But he slider. Off one and two. Slider way well, too much. The result of a lot of foul balls. He might have tried to do a little bit too much with it, trying to get him to swing through it, but it just ended up taking off on him. Bottom of the second here with no score. Here we go now. Let's go. Just a bit uh, come on, Blue. <laughs> We've got ourselves an awesome battle going on right here. Bottom line, the guy who's going to win this situation. A swing and a miss. That retires the side, and that will do it. The lovely... He's out. Out. So stepping in is Richard O'Neill. Performance at the plates, giving this team a major offensive boost and put him in strong contention for the batting title. And he's got a chance to collect some serious hardware, individually and team-wise. If everything goes according to plan and he finishes strong, uh -huh. this team's going to play in October. And once and the throw is in time to get him to retire the. So here now is the pitcher Seth Romero as we move on to the bottom of inning number three. And he fouls this one off. I love everything this pitcher's got working right now. He's got presence. He's got great body language on the mound. He's got fastball command and a nice early feel for his off-speed stuff. And while he's been a dominant offensive force this year, a quick look at his last 10 games paints a bleaker picture. His batting average is below 250 over that stretch. And this is the last time you want to go into a little mini slump right here. Dog days, you want to finish strong. There's only a handful of games left. You're fighting for a batting title. He has to find a way to maybe take two steps back, maybe give away in at bat to calibrate that fastball again. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Pache is there now, and he has it. <sighs> Carter Keboom digs in now. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Well out in front of the breaking ball there for a strike. That's Larry Ball pull the string on him. Looked like he tried to pull it there, but he swings right through the fastball. Two out lightning definitely applies to this offense. If this two hole hitter can get on, but we'll leave it right there as he strikes out, and that ends the inning. So no runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left. Three innings complete, and we are tied nothing, nothing. Bottom of the inning now, and that'll bring up the outfielder, Juan Soto. The old adage, pitching and defense have been stellar so far. They've certainly kept both offenses in check. No balls and a strike to count. Swinging strike, and now it's 0-2. This guy's been really on point so far, but it's not getting any easier. He has to get through four, five, and six right here.
fouled away. Now another 0-2. Half swing that time, but it's a full swing in the eyes of the umpire. And that's the first time. You got him to chase it. Him just enough with that pitch to get him to go around according to the umpire. Sometimes it can be really tough with these big, strong guys. Paul DeYoung. Once they're committed to swinging, it's hard for them to slow their swings down. And that appeared to be the case there. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. Paul DeYoung comes on with one gone here as he looks at a called strike one. Hey, usually the second time through the order, you start seeing it. Now here's one high and deep to left. If it stays fair, it's gone. And that nearly would have gotten him on the board. Instead, it's a long foul ball. Ah, uh, man, just a hair early on that one and just pulled it foul. He's going to have to find a way to refocus. Not easy to the chase. after you just went deep foul. So he ran the fastball by him for the punch out. Paul DeYoung. Out the controller two. sucks. I can't put the ball up in the strike zone. It's annoying. I'm gonna buy this one controller off of Amazon, and then after a couple of months, the motors inside just started going and wouldn't stop. So I'm like, okay, it's so a fluke so I bought another one because it was pretty good and the same thing happens to that one too so no more buying cheap controllers off of Amazon and I didn't want to buy spend $60 on a new controller because I'm hoping to God that somebody gonna have a PS5 in stock some stuff this guy's arsenal you can't figure out what he's trying to do a lot of different directions he can go in right here full count now the three two pitch he is swung on and missed he got him on strikes so they go down without a whimper here we played four full and we are tied nothing nothing Victor Robles. Ready to deliver. Here comes the first pitch. Yeah, that's live ball. High in the air out towards shallow right. Harper has a read on it. He's got it one away. Next, it'll be Mitch Garver looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. This is foul right side. A one count. Here's the pitch. Oh, and he's really getting the better of him now. It's strike two. Man, this guy's really pitched well so far, attacking the strike zone, and he's really kept these hitters off balance. Pache calls off the left fielder as he takes charge for the second out. Stepping in next, Orlando Garcia struck out. Orlando. Yeah, kind of shocked. He got Orlando. blown away with a fastball. You could tell he was late on that one, and we'll see. If he tries to cheat to something, this A.B. No, that's taken mm. several inches below the zone, in fact. Swing and a flare down the line. And that's in there. Oh, he drops in there. <laughs> wow. That was crazy. You see, that's only the third hit. He's given up the entire game, so he's still a total controller. In now, Seth Romero. And the first pitch misses to him. It's ball one. And that's in there for his strike one and one. Nice adjustment out on the mound. Overthrew the first one a little bit, but got on top and let that ball rip right out in front. Uh. The pitcher's got himself a base hit. You're talking about frustrating as a pitcher. You have the pitcher up a 
two outs, and he extends the inning there with a base hit. Yeah, it's funny. I hit eighth in my career, and the grind was to try and get the pitcher up so he could waste that out and flip the lineup over. This guy took it into his own hands and did just that by getting a knock. Now we could have some issues here. And the inning will end as they're unable to cash in with Jam the shit out of them. Nats leave a pair. Sixth inning. Now in the box, Richard O'Neill is coming off a month in which he earned National League Player of the Month recognition. And now here's a ball hit pretty well out toward right center field. And this is into the alley and ought to be good for extra bases. Uh, damn it, this sucks at my speed. That you lose all the other abilities as a pitcher. Like, I don't understand why they made it like that. You're one person, so your speed and all that shit shouldn't go away when you're pitching. Your speed and your hitting shouldn't be affected because you're pitching. You think that's something that they would address, but they didn't address that shit at all. And make a patch, they didn't do a fucking thing. San Diego Studio wiped their ass with it and tell you to go fuck yourself. Next to dig in, one Soto over two for him to this point. Because I don't see why. First of all, I don't see why you need it two. You don't need two friggin' layouts, one for pitching, one for hitting. And you should they should make it so it's one. One fucking layout and you can put all the perks in that one layout. Loadout, I should say. But for some reason you gotta have two of them. But hopefully, if they keep the same shit, because they never keep the same stuff, so. But if they keep the same thing next season, next year, in 2022, hopefully they make it so it's one loadout. Whether you're pitching, if you're a two-way player or a one-way player or whatever, it's just one loadout. And you put all your perks and shit in there. Kind of like how they do on 2K. Ooh, it's off his glove. In 2K, you pick your badge. Oh, he's out. What? That dude's so slow at tagging. What the fuck? Oh, come on, Blue. What the hell? That one looked like it could easily have gone the other way. There's a big difference between 0 and 2 and 1 and 1. But now this next pitch probably becomes the biggest of the at bat. Man, there's just no threw the fucking ball away. Make a play like that, especially your shortstop. Looked like a routine play, but for some reason, he just pulled the first baseman off the bag. It happens, but you never want to give a team extra outs. Big spot here. Runners at the corners. Two gone. And that'll bring up the outfielder, Victor Robles. First pitch fastball off the plate there, and it's ball one. Boy, the Nationals could use a big hit right here. They really haven't been able to do much. Oh, wow. Ready with the 2 0. Two and one. I'm surprised they didn't call that a ball. Oh, friggin' prick. Two and two. Two and two. Two and two. Here it is. And he's got another one here. Twelve punch outs now in the ball game, and that'll end the inning. Nats leave a pair, and this is still a nothing, nothing ball game. Three. Ball four, take the win. Three. Three. Last half 
for the seventh here. And now it will be the catcher, Mitch Garver. The catcher, Mitch Garver. Here's the first pitch. That stupid thing to put the ball where. Hit on the ground to short. Scooped up. Throw to first is in time for the first down. And now here is Orlando Garcia. He singled in two trips to the plate thus far. And he gets ahead here with the fastball. Strike one. Now the Nats are going to get a left hander up and throwing in the bullpen. Fastball, and he's quickly in the hole, 0-2. After falling down 0-2 on the same pitch, don't be shocked if he triples up on it. And he mm -hmm. a fastball high there, 1-2. and two. High fastball right there with a two-strike count. You know what that might be doing? Setting up the next pitch could be that hard slider down and away. Something breaking down and away off the plate. So he racks up the swinging strikeout on the breaking ball. Orlando Garcia becomes out number two this inning. Anthony Rizzo will pinch hit here with two outs and the base is empty. Wheels and deals. Here's the first pitch. As he will swing and miss on a fastball on the outer half. Rizzo. The number's coming in. He's at 255. Seven homers and 23 driven in. One and one the count now. And the pitch. On that fastball is too much for him there. One and two. So far, this has been a terrific outing for this guy. Throwing well, keeping his pitches to a minimum, locating his fastball to both sides of the plate, good command of the off-speed pitches, very little traffic on the bases. So far, he couldn't have drawn up to be any better than he has been so far in this one. This one's flared toward left center. Damn Rizzo up. <laughs> Handles it easily, and the inning is over. Nationals gone in order. Still no score. Ow. That's ball four. And I ain't gonna get the win because well, the they took me out the game and then they scored a run. This three game series playing for the sweep tomorrow. A five nothing finish tonight. The Philadelphia Phillies came through late, taking the lead in the eighth to secure the victory. Richard O'Neill earns his eighth victory of the season. Oh, I did get the victory. Okay. Sam Clay takes the loss, only his first of the year. So that'll do it for us. For Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney, and our entire crew, I'm Matt Baxter. Sam Clay. Watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way over to the new website, theshow.com. Took the L. Six hits, no errors. They left seven men on base. Time of the ball game, two hours and 49 minutes. Tonight's paid attendance at National Park, 41,339. The Nationals thank you for your attendance and remind you to please drive. Afternoon baseball now from the banks of the Anacostia River and Nationals Park here in Washington. Today, a matchup of NL East rivals between the Philadelphia Phillies and the Washington Nationals. Richard O'Neill, the league's leading hitter, continues his march toward the National League batting crown. Next. Jeffrey Rodriguez, a right-handed native of the Dominican Republic, will be the starter. What do we need to know here, Danny? Hey, you can't always judge a pitcher by the numbers. I know the ERA is into the fours coming into this start. 
but he's actually a pretty solid pitcher. And every once in a while, he can throw some decent games in there. It's not easy having an ERA under four in baseball. He's slightly over that, but this guy striding in is Richard O'Neill. His performance at the plate's given this team a major offensive boost and put him in strong contention for the batting title. And he's got a chance to collect some serious hardware, individually and team-wise. If everything goes according to plan and he finishes strong, this team's going to play in October. Uh. Once you get to October, anything can happen. Stepping up is Bryant Packard. It lead things off here in the bottom half. Senzatella. <clears throat> High fly ball out to straightaway center. Long run for the center fielder. He gets to it and makes the catch for the first out. tagging up that's another thing that the San Diego studio needs to fix you know what I'm saying they should fix this shit for years and because the CPU don't like tagging up Two for two, two singles, RBI. Not bad at all. One, two. And there he goes towards second. Got him swinging the throw. And it's far too late as he steals second with ease. So they'll have to be content with just the strikeout there as the runner's able to get himself into scoring position with one away. So next to hit is JT Real Muto. 0 for 2 on his line thus far. Here comes the one two. Heading out towards shallow Hunt right. Ball, halfway, halfway. And that's taken in straightaway yeah. right. Will he try from second? Okay, right. that dude is offline like crazy. Now with the plate is Bobby Dalbeck, runner in scoring position with two guys. Bobby. The three two pitch. Down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Come on, come on, come on, come on. In at second safely as a run will score on the play as well. So much of this game is situational hitting, guys. Nice job there. Yeah, you've got to find a way to pick your teammates up when you're given the chance. And he doesn't try to do too much right here. He just takes it.
So next to bat will be Richard O'Neill, singled in his last at bat. Yeah, Matt, he pressure's off right now. He extended his hitting streak that last plate appearance. Now he gets to get back into his zone, work on his craft, and try and drive come something on, in again. Wow. Wow. That's some bullshit if I ever seen it. They tell me that he didn't have enough power to hit the ball up for a home run there. Shit. Having a better day than I am. He's three for four. Home run, two singles, two RBIs. Lasted a solo homer last time up. The three one pitch. And a single not close as this misses down and away for ball four. Oh, that's a walk that could really change the complexion of the game. With the bases loaded, if he gives up a base hit right here, it could be a real muto. Real Muto. Real Muto. Out of the play, JT Real Muto struggling so far in this one and looking to erase his 0 for 4 ball game right here. Real Muto. Now a ball hit in the air and this going, looks like it'll going. get him out of the uh, zone. Is there as he makes the catch? Didn't do no good. Didn't do no better either. remaining for them to try and rally back in this one. Now he goes the other way and he got a lot of it high and deep to left center field. And he gets there, makes the running play, and that ends the inning. Three up, three down for Washington. Can't cut into that eight to six deficit. Three. Come on, Edwin, you better not blow this game. So, uh, why did they take Edwin out? They should have just left him in there. <laughs> oh, man. That was Luke Jackson in there would give up a three run bomb. The fuck? And let's let Diaz close the game out. Well, guys, that's going to do it for me today. If you guys enjoyed this video, it would be really appreciated. If you drop a like, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so you never miss another upload. Remember, stay safe, wash your hands, wear your mask if you choose to. But most important of all, be kind to each other and tell someone you love them. Have a wonderful day. Peace.